Minnesota Today podcast is supported by Granite Partners, celebrating 20 years of growing Minnesota-based companies that source and sell around the world. Granite Partners, growing companies, enhancing communities. You can learn more at granite.com. Hey, it's the last day of March. It's the 31st. It is Thursday. This is Minnesota Today from NPR News. I'm Kathy Warzer. Glad you're with us. Stories we're following today include jury deliberations and the trial of a Hopkins man accused of selling what turned out to be fentanyl online, killing 11 people in 10 states. Authorities allege the customers of Aaron Broussard thought they were buying a stimulant that's similar to Adderall. Instead, the 31-year-old Hopkins man allegedly sent them fatal doses of fentanyl. A Red Lake Nation man is expected to plead guilty tomorrow to killing a tribal police officer last summer. Matt Sepik has more. A federal grand jury indicted 28-year-old David Donnell Jr. on charges including first-degree premeditated murder, eight counts of assault, and two firearms charges. In late July, Red Lake tribal police officers went to Donnell's home after receiving a request for a wellness check. Prosecutors say Donnell fatally shot Officer Ryan Bialke. The 37-year-old left behind a wife and four children. Donnell also allegedly fired at four other officers. Court documents indicate he'll plead guilty to a charge of second-degree murder, and prosecutors will drop the other. 10 counts. I'm Matt Sepik, St. Paul. A Minnesota Senate criminal justice bill that ramps up punishment for violent crimes includes mandatory prison time for carjacking offenses. The bill is moving through that body. Carjacking would result in a minimum of two years and a maximum of 25 years in prison. Ramsey County Sheriff Bob Fletcher told the Senate Judiciary and Public Safety Committee that stiff penalties are needed. Every single day, Someone has a gun stuck in their face, in their chest, in the metro area as a part of their car being carjacked. Local authorities would be required to submit more data to the state on carjacking crimes, including whether weapons were used and anybody was hurt or killed. There's a hearing today that could certify a Proctor, Minnesota high school student as an adult in a case where the student is accused of sexually assaulting a teammate on the school's football team. The student, who is 17, is facing a felony count of criminal sexual conduct. The incident led to the cancellation of the remainder of the team's football season and the resignation of the coach. Minneapolis Public School Superintendent Ed Graff says he's leaving the district when his current contract ends in June of this year. The announcement, shared by letter with the school board, comes just after the end of an educator strike during which about 30,000 students missed three weeks of class. The district says it will announce plans and a timeline to find a new superintendent soon. An organization operating a free food market in the East Twin Cities metro area has expanded to two locations. Mark Sedeklik has more. Christian Cupboard Emergency Food Shelf Executive Director Jessica Francis says an increasing number of people are facing food insecurity as the price of everything from gasoline to groceries is going up. She says the first free market the group opened in northern Oakdale last May has proved to be a busy place serving as many as 260 households a day. It's not a food shelf. This is different. The Today's Harvest is a free food market. And the way that it's different is it takes the items that are are most in demand for people that need more access to, to food. So it's making those items highly accessible in this market that's open six days a week and is simple and easy for people to shop. Francis says the food is available to anyone who needs it. She says local grocery stores donate all of the food. I'm Mark Sedeklik. In sports, the Timberwolves fell to the Raptors last night in Toronto, 125-102. to Twins beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in spring training baseball yesterday, 9-4. to Twins play the Red Sox today in Florida. Oh, it'd be nice to be in Florida today, though. Decreasing clouds in this region. Highs will be in the 30s. Clear overnight, lows of 10 to 15 in the northeast, 20s in the south and west. Tomorrow, not as cool. Increasing clouds, but dry. Highs will be in the lower 40s to the lower 50s. If you're looking for more news right now, you can always stream us by going to mprnews.org. Download that news app, tell your smart speakers to play NPR News, or just turn on the radio. I hope you have a good day today. I'm Kathy Worser.